I just got a message from Juniper Creek. Oh? How long is it going to be? Well, a day anyway, maybe even longer. Ah, oh, well, I guess you better get going. Roll out the odd fellas, coach. Uh, rassle up a four-horse team and go fetch her. Sir, you just put me on the spot. Right between a rock and a hard place. I was told that nobody's going to fetch her. Who by? Bennett. The senator? No, his son Carson. He said that he's going to be driving Miss Lola Fairmont down the main street of Virginia City and nobody else. Now, you can order me to send a coach. Roy, I'm an odd fellow, but I ain't that odd. <laughs> Hey, Roy. Howdy, Hodge. What's this I hear about the creek? It's been the washout. Yeah, how bad is it? Well, it's so bad that there ain't a splinter left of the old bridge. Well, how's the lady going to get in? Maybe she won't. Thank you. Hey. Thought you were going to meet me over at the bank. What happened? Oh, yeah, I was, but something came up. Tell Paul will be late for supper. Well, what, what is it? Well, I don't want Miss Fairmont to have to spend the night out there on the creek. Miss Fairmont? What do you have to do with Miss Fairmont? Just tell Paul will be late, huh? All right. Miss Fairmont. Looking for something, Hoss? Yeah. Where about is your crew? I'll send them home. The senator, he don't approve of his employees wasting money. Trying to build a bridge across water that ain't gone down, that's purely a waste. What about that stage? Well, if it's the one I think you mean, it ain't a regular stage, so it ain't my problem. <laughs> yeah, but you know who's on it? Sure I know who's on it. And if Mr. Bennett don't get here, she's either gonna have to swim for it or sleep in the coach over there in the far bank. Aw. Montaigne, that ain't gonna get it. You can't expect a lady like Lola Fairmont to wade through a mess like that. It'd be fun to watch her try, though, wouldn't it? Out there in the middle, it ought to be about neck deep. Of course, if uh, you want to keep her feet dry, you might try building the footbridge across there. You got all the makings right here. Yeah, I might just do that. How come you getting so worked up over some sporting lady like Lola Fairmont? Montaigne, I'm gonna make out like I didn't hear that. Now, you get out of here while I figure out what I'm going to do. Go on. You get that wagon unloaded, I'll send the driver back to pick it up.
wait here. I'll check things out. Well, what you got? It's not just what we got, it's what we ain't got. What do you do in a case like this? You got an idea and I'll listen. What do you mean? You mean we're just stuck here? What do you think? And we got 10,000 people waiting for us in Virginia City. She's got a performance tonight. It's all sold out, too. There's a parade and a marching band. I mean, the mayor's gonna give Lola Key to the city. What'd you ask me if he's got a bridge? Lola? Lola, you're not gonna believe this. But... your name? Cartwright. What are we going to do about this, Cartwright? What, ma'am? Well, this bridge business. Uh, who's going to uh, fix it? Oh, I, I've been working on it, but if I had a couple of three more hours... Well, where are the others? Well, I, I'm the only one here, ma'am. Uh, I got a couple of planks up. If you had a bit ahead of schedule, I could at least head you a foot bridge across here. If you just give me a couple of more hours... Cartwright. I don't have a couple of hours. I'm due in Virginia City at 520. Yeah, well, you just better forget about that. Just turn back. Charlie, I want you to meet Cartwright. He builds bridges God. by himself. Oh, not really, ma'am. Now, don't be modest. Is that your wagon and team of horses? Uh, no, ma'am. Well, can you use them? Why, well, right, I could, yeah. Cartwright, I have a wonderful idea. Careful, Cartwright. I will, ma'am. You know, if you were a man, there'd be a way of delineating your character with eloquence and precision. Thank you. Since I'm not a man, shut up. How far did you say it was to the stage stop? Man, it was a good team. 20 minutes, maybe. And then another two or three hours to Virginia City. Yes, ma'am. Out a boy, Cartwright! Cartwright, all the way across the wash up and not a spot on me. Oh. Uh, two. Uh, oh. Oops, hardly a spot. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Thanks. Keep it. Thanks. Ah. Uh, uh, well, talk to me, Cartwright. Why, well, I, I ain't much of one for conversation, ma'am. Well, uh, what were you doing there at the wash out? Well, I. I ain't a part of the crew, ma'am. See, I just heard about your predicament, and I didn't like the idea of you having to spend the night out there at that washout, so I thought I'd drive out and do something about it. You mean you rode all the way out from Virginia City to... Yes, ma'am. Well, what did you do a thing like that for? Well, sometimes I do crazy things, ma'am. Have we ever met before, Cartwright? No, ma'am. You just make it a habit of building bridges for people? Well, not for everybody, no, ma'am. <laughs> I never had anyone build me a bridge before. Cartwright, I... Uh, I want you to know I'm very touched. Well, you're welcome, ma'am. I'll tell you what, anytime you need any bridges built, you just call on me.
Gentleman inside got business with the lady. Help me down, Cartwright. When the hired help starts jumping, I know who's causing it. Thank you. Welcome to Juniper Creek. Say the speeches, Bennett. I said it all in San Francisco. Let go of me. Now. Private business, mister. Stay out of it. I'm thinking about your future, Laura, that's all. I'm thinking about all the days and weeks and months and years you're going to regret what you did in San Francisco. Let go of me. You're going to ride in the Virginia City and you're going to ride with me, understand? From now on, that guy next to you is going to be me. Nobody else. Me. No more of this playing around with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Stay out of it, horse. Are you all right, ma'am? Look out! I'm... I'm sorry, Cartwright. Hush. Hush. Senator Son. I'm a broke around my neck so fast. Nobody will touch you. You don't know the senator. Give me that gun. You never owned a gun, you hear? No. You never owned it. Don't we? Oh, wait. Hoss. He attacked her. I stopped him. Now, you look after the lady, or you'll answer to me. I'm riding out of here. Well, horse has really done it. Ain't nobody can help him now. Get up. My horse. Get my horse out of sight. <laughs> Law. Get Joe. Uh, uh, uh. <clears throat> yep. <Yeah. coughs> ah. Ah. Hey. Those squeezing his ears are getting better. I reckon. Yeah. It used to be awful. Now they're just middling terrible. Yeah. You don't like it, you can take your business across the street. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't you go traipsing nowhere. I'll be back directly. Yeah. 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 
Winter in the Tetons. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. oh, that brat. Oh, has she learned anything else? Son, long winter. <laughs> I know it don't make sense. Ain't nothing made sense from the beginning. All right, let's try it once more. Now, you heard the shot. I heard the shot. I ran for the door just as I got there, someone threw the bolt inside. Are you sure? No, I ain't sure. I'm making the whole thing up. There weren't no dead man, there weren't no shooting, and there weren't no washout. And the stage just went right on past without stopping. Climb down, Fontaine. Nobody's accusing you of nothing. Well, that ain't the way it sounds to me. All right, all right, all right. Now, what did Hoss say to you when you went inside? He told me, look after the lady or I'd have to answer to him. Well, why would he say that? Ask him. Well, Hoss never saw that lady before in his life. She's told us so herself. Well, you just have to get the rest of your answers from her. We tried that. She was just too hysterical to make any sense at all. Hysterical? Lola Fairmont? That woman could ride an avalanche down, never scuff the polish on her shoes. Must have fell out of stream bed. Did you follow the ridges? Yeah, nothing. There's a thousand ways you could have gone. I'm getting a fresh horse right now. I'll bring it You better find him before the senator gets into it. He'll call out the army. Actually, she's canceled all of her performances. All of them? All of them. Well, what about the rest of the tour? Well, I don't know yet. I mean, I, I'm not even thinking of that right at the moment. I mean, I don't have to explain to you the reason why, do I? No, I'm sorry, Mr. Quiller. That's all I can give you at the moment. You have to excuse me. Well, it takes care of the press. Want a drink? No. We got about 24 hours, more or less. I said we got about 24 hours. To what? Till the senator gets here. They wired him in Sacramento. You sure you don't want that drink, honey? I mean, I don't want to press things, but if you're going to drink, it better be tonight. Because tomorrow you're going to be cold stone sober, even if I have to put a muzzle on you. Do you hear me? Are you listening to me? I'm thinking about Cartwright. Yeah. You're all torn up inside, right? Is that so strange? No, it's not strange. It's just phony. Who says it's phony? Maybe it isn't. Thank you. See, so you're 34 years old now, Lola. You know, someday, somewhere, an honest emotion is going to come to you. It's got to happen sometime. But when it does, you won't even recognize it. Shut up. You're a fake, Lola. You're a big fake. You've been selling phony emotions on and off the stage for so long, an honest emotion would knock you unconscious. Now you got that big clown out there somewhere in the mountains. He doesn't know it, but he's going to pay for this. Maybe with his life. And you, you're just going to sit tight and keep your mouth shut and just play it as it lays. Because that's the only move you've got, honey. Because anything else is going to cost you about $140,000 in bookings between here and New York. And a ruined career. And maybe even a pretty hangman snoozing about a state prison. Get out of here, Charlie. Too late to take the veil, honey. Get out. Oh, uh, 
Sleep tight. Want. Fairmont. Woman. Uh, I miss Fairmont. Horse Cartwright's calling for you. Feeling poorly? Bad head split. I'll take you to him. Right now? I can't just. I got no time to stand here jawing with you, woman. Get your plunder together. We got a fur piece to travel before, son up. But that's out of the question. I. He's calling for you, woman. All right. Just a minute. some wood. Well, wait a minute. I... How do I... How do I get down from here? You untangle yourself and fall down. I got no time for jawing. But I... Get that horse of yours out of sight. We'll lean to yonder. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, oh, wait. Oh, 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 oh. Whoa, whoa. I, I'm not gonna hurt you. Whoa. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm not going to hurt you. Come on. Cut right.
Cartwright? What are you doing here? I don't know. Can't fix anything. Can't make it right. Can only tell you how sorry I am. But, Miss Fairmont, if they find you here... Just hush up. Look, I, I'm gonna Just be all right. talk. Go on, go on, get. I brought you your handkerchief back. It's yours. I, I gave it to you. Go on. Go to sleep. Uh, sleep. You never unsaddled your horse. I thought I'd leave that to you. Yeah, you never shine amongst the Arapahoes, woman. Throw you out of camp. Here, yeah. take these with you. Watch me a good bait of them. Find them uh, close to water in the shade. Well, what are they? Yarbs. <clears throat> Mountain medicine. Get a big bait of them. Old horse has got a ways to travel before he's sassy again. What you gawking at, woman? Get! been sticking pretty close to the cabin, have you? Tolliver, what you hunting? Horse Cartwright and a woman. Now this lady and a livery horse with the side saddle on it both come up missing this morning. Nobody come by, you say? Prospector fellow, about a week ago. Give him a bait of cornmeal. <laughs> you can down if you want. Come in for a drink. That comes by. You give us the word, you hear? Yeah. Heavens forbid, but that our loves and comforts should increase, even as our days do grow. Amen to that. Good right. Hey, 
used. <coughs> Feeling pretty? Thought I was dreaming. Yeah. Ain't surprising since you like to get your head knocked off. What's she doing here? He fetched me. Yeah. yeah. Most ways she ain't much account, but she shines with the arbs. Grady you had no right. Sat up all night with you, putting on the arbs. She ain't in it with the Rappaho, but for a white woman, she's tolerable. Making saleratus biscuits. Well, what do you know about saleratus biscuits? Botch! Cartwright, what's a Rapaho? Sort of an Indian. Where does he get that? Ah, oh, ma'am, I wouldn't pay too much attention to him. I've weighed 10 pounds and beat any Rapaho squaw in the country. Talking pretty big there. Where'd you learn how to make them biscuits, anyhow? My mother ran a boarding house. Who was your pa? I never knew. Neither did my mother. Anything else, ma'am? This pie ain't bad. As good as the Rappahoes? Only thing that woman couldn't make was dry apple pie. When was the last time you made dry apple pie, ma'am? When are you going to stop calling me ma'am? Lola. Not since I was a girl. Rappahoe women makes first-rate plum duck. Why are you foxing up that fire for a woman? I about melted down to a puddle of teller. Cartwright, it's time you had a bath. A bath? A bath. Rap old women never done that. <laughs> you feel better? Much, thank you. You're sure now? Oh, I wouldn't lie to you. Well, I don't know. Why? I wouldn't tell you no lie, ma'am. Well, you did before, Cartwright. You told me a big one, a big black whopper. What do you mean? You said we never met before. Well, we ain't. Formally. I don't know how I could have forgotten you. Big gawky stagehand at McGuire's in San Francisco. <laughs> the year I did Desdemona. <laughs> I'll be doggone. I wouldn't have figured in a million years you'd have remembered that. And you gave me some of the lines from the second act when you were delirious. I haven't done Othello for ten years, but I remembered. The heavens forbid but that our loves and comfort should increase, even as our days do grow. Amen to that. What's the rest? Oh, golly, golly. I've forgotten them. I know this. Remember the first time that fella smothered you with that pillow? I dang near run out on the stage and tackled him. <laughs> <laughs> you were the... You were the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen in my whole life. How long did you work for McGuire? Oh, about two months, I reckon. I came into San Francisco to see the big city and lost all my money in a gambling parlor. And I sure wasn't about to go home and tell my pa what I'd done, so I figured the best thing for me to do is get a job and make a little money before I went back home. And Mr. McGuire was hiring husky stagehands, and it seems like I turned out to be one of them. I worked there with him for a couple of months. Y'all left town, the show went back east, and I came on back home. I, I wondered what happened to you. I kept up with you. I mean, we got newspapers back here regular, you know. 
So I kept up with you all over Europe, everything you did. Even that Spanish prince. And then them, them two fellas that had that duel over you. And even where you played before the queen, Queen Victoria. Yeah, I kept up with all of that. But I, I reckon you must have a lot of fellas that do that, that keep up with you like that, I mean, follow you around and all. That's exactly what I was doing out there, fixing that bridge. <laughs> Oh, Romeo, Romeo. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Ah, oh, ma'am, don't be silly. If thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. Or if thou thinkst I am too quickly won, I'll frown and be perverse and say thee nay, so thou wilt woo. But else not for the world. Sweet. Good night. This bud of love, by summer's ripening breath, may prove a beauteous flower when next we meet. Good night. Good night. This sweet repose and rest come to thy heart, as that within my breast. Say that unless you mean it. Can't write. I. I don't know. That's the hell of it. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. Why did you lie about it? Why did you say you killed it? Joseph. Just some things a man has to do, sometimes, no matter what. Oh, come on, Alice. Oh, listen to me. Joseph, I... it's my play. I ain't hurting nobody but me. Yeah, well, what about Paul? What do you think you're doing to him? Paul, understand. I don't think so. All right, look, you care about the girl, but there's more at stake than that. What about the ranch? There's not going to be any pieces to pick up when this is over. Haven't you ever heard of Senator Bennett? <sighs> He's not that powerful. He can't do all that. Oh, well, he can, and I think he will. I'm not going to argue with you anymore. It's your decision. Joseph. Is my horse outside? What's going to happen to you? Well, it'll... Be Joe and Paul. They'll they'll help. Well, I better be going down too. Grady will ride with me. Where is he? He'll be back later. He, he said there were too many people. He hates crowds. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Lola. Lola. Here. Better take your bandana. Why, that's yours. Well, don't you worry about a thing. Nothing's gonna happen to you, I'll see to that. Come on, Joseph. I don't like to keep repeating myself, Cartwright. Neither do I, Mr. Bennett. I must point out to you that you are committing a criminal offense by concealing a fugitive from justice. Now, say it just once more, Senator. I don't know where my son is. I suggest you find out. We're doing everything we can. It's not enough. I want that man here by tomorrow morning at the latest. And I'll see to it that he is here if I have to order out a whole troop of cavalry. You'll have to excuse me, Senator. I haven't finished. Well, I have. Now, listen to everything I'm going to. Now, I don't care who you are, how much you yell, or how many poops of cavalry you can muster. Now, just a minute, Cartwright. Your time is up. I can shut off the water to this penny-ante cow ranch like turning a spigot. 
I can cut off your markets, put you out of business with a stroke of a pen. Do it. All right. I've done it to other men, bigger men than you, without any compunction whatsoever. Good night, Senator. Now, you listen to me. My son is dead, murdered. The only witness is missing, kidnapped, to my way of thinking. And the way cow country justice operates around here, if I didn't assert myself, the whole thing would be kicked under the rug and forgotten. Now, I'm a man that knows what he wants, and I'm used to getting my way. I'm sorry, boy. It's gonna take some explaining. Just happy to see you back. Stand over here. Well, there you are, Senator. Well, let's have it. What's your story, cowboy? Wait a minute. Let him talk. Well, I, I don't really know how to. Try the truth. What happened inside that stage stop? Your son grabbed a hold of the lady. The truth, I said. He loved that woman. She's a no-good tramp, but he loved her. He wouldn't lay a hand on her. Well, he did. I thought he was going to kill her. That's why I... Tell him the truth, Cartwright. That's what killed him, Mr. Bennett. And it's mine. Lola. Shut up and sit down, Cartwright. I killed him, Mr. Bennett. Because I couldn't take him anymore. I couldn't take all of the what you call the dark corners of his nature. I walked out on him in San Francisco, went back on the stage, picked up where I left off before I had the bad luck to run into him. And he caught up with me at that stage stop, and he attacked me, and I killed him. And this poor, wonderful guy has been trying ever since to take the blame for it. So, that's the truth, Mr. Bennett. And if you want to press murder charges, then I'm your huckleberry. But you better think long and hard before you make your move. Because I'll go back to San Francisco and stand up in court and give the performance of my life. Book, chapter, and sordid, miserable verse. I'll drag out dirty linen enough to stretch from one end of Montgomery Street to the other. It'll be the wildest drag through the mud the Bennett name ever took. And it'll ruin me forever. Lola Fairmount will go down the drain. But Senator Carson Bennett will go down the drain with me. If that's what you want. You can have it. Now, why don't you get out of this respectable house? I'm sure Mr. Cartwright has had enough of you. I'll be in touch, Miss Fairmont. Do that. I wish I was good enough for you. <laughs> 